Hi, this is Jeff Curto, and welcome to episode number 54 of Camera Position, a podcast about the creative side of photography. Well, it's summer. It's summer all over the Northern Hemisphere, and summertime brings me makes me think about uh, being a child. I've got a couple of kids of my own. They're getting bigger every minute, but uh, certainly watching them enjoy their summertime period is... Uh, uh, helps me remember what it's like to be a child. And and I was reading along the other day and reminded about this uh, terrific quotation by the, the great uh, artist Pablo Picasso. And Picasso said, All children are artists. The problem is how to remain an artist once he grows up. And then there are some other perhaps apocryphal quotes uh, by Picasso, ideas about how it took him years and years and years of hard work and study to learn how to draw like a child. Uh, the idea of being able to make a drawing uh, that looks like a child's drawing, that looks that has that sort of youthful exuberance, uh, was something that was important to Picasso. And as I was uh, looking at, uh, at, at these quotations, I also happened to pick up a uh, a, a book that I have that has a, a variety of different photographs in the in the uh, in the book, historical photographs mostly. It's uh, sort of a, a, a roughly a history of photography kind of a book, and I was reminded about this marvelous photographer, uh, Jacques Henri Lartigue. Uh, Lartigue, whose uh, birth and death dates are 1894 to 1986, so uh, you know. Uh, been he's been dead for uh, about 20 years but um the the idea here is that he was a photographer who started making photographs when he was 6 years old and his subject matter was primarily his own life and the people and activities in it and so as a child he photographed his friends and his family at play they were running and jumping and racing two-wheeled soapboxes and building kites and gliders and airplanes and uh, because he was French they were climbing the Eiffel Tower and just a huge variety of, of things but a huge variety of kid things childlike things that um, that really uh, are indicative of this sort of playful attitude uh, and uh, I really just you know I, I want you to get some semblance of what these photographs are like by Lartigue because they are so incredibly marvelous, but marvelous in their simplicity and also kind of in their naivete. The idea that the pictures really, really are not particularly sophisticated because most of them are made by a, a, a kid. Now, Lartigue continued to photograph throughout his life, but uh, to my knowledge, his later work really never quite matched up with this wonderful childlike exuberance that he had as a young boy. Um, and I, I also found, I started looking at, at uh, Lartigue and, and uh, found some bits and pieces by John Zarkowski. Uh, Zarkowski, of course, the great former director of the uh, photography department at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. And uh, Zarkowski said, in 1911, Jacques Henri Lartigue was not merely as unprejudiced as a child, he was a child. By the time he was 10, he was making photographs that anticipate the best small camera work of a generation later. Lartigue had no perceptible effect on the development of 20th century photography, since his work was virtually unknown until half a century and more after the best of it had been done. When his work came to light, it seemed to confirm the inevitability of what had happened in photography much later, when more mature and sophisticated photographers came to understand what the child had found by intuition. Zarkowski goes on to say, The word amateur has two meanings. In the classical sense, it is the antonym of professional and refers to those who pursue a problem for love rather than for the rewards the world may offer. In this sense, the word often identifies the most sophisticated practitioners in a field. Many of photography's greatest names have been amateurs as pure as the crocuses of spring, and many others, though mercenaries during the week, have done their best work on weekends. So here's this photographer, and again, a photographer exalted by none other than John Zarkowski, one of the great 
uh, curator is one of the great critics uh, and observers of photography and the history of the medium. And the photographs are marvelous primarily because they are naive, because they are playful, and because Lartigue was doing what all great artists, I think, really do. He was photographing the things he was most excited about. And the idea here of going back to that that notion that, gosh, if you don't photograph what you know, if you don't photograph what you're interested in, if you photograph what you think is interesting, um, or, or rather what you think is going to produce an interesting photograph, uh, you're really kind of behind the eight ball. You're behind the curve in a way. So what Lartigue was doing was making photographs not because he was being told that these are interesting photographs. He was simply making photographs in the same way that children will become interested in something that they are just interested in without anybody telling them, gosh, you're supposed to be interested in this instead of that. So I, I kind of contrast all of this with much of, uh, I shouldn't say much of, but uh, some of contemporary photography that I'm just not particularly interested in. And, you know, I look at this stuff and notice that it's uh, being exalted in a variety of ways. And for me, some of it sort of falls flat. And does that mean that what I should be doing is trying to make photographs like those photographs? I don't think so. I think that what I do as a photographer, what you do as a photographer, what we all do as photographers is or, or should be looking at the things that interest us most and continuing to look at those things uh, so that we get to know them better. Because really, in many ways, photography is just our way of celebrating the things that we already love, the things that we're already interested in, the things that already fascinate us. So take a lesson here from this child, this child, Jacques-Henri Lartigue. Lartigue, this fabulous French photographer whose work is uh, really unparalleled. And uh, I hope you got what Zarkowski was saying there, that Lartigue really presaged so much of what went on with small format photography later on in the second half of the 20th century, but he did it quite a long time beforehand, simply by examining what the camera did, looking at the things that he was interested in, and making photographs without any kind of a prejudicial idea of what it is that he wanted to do. So uh, it's summertime, and with summertime we get to the, to the place where we can do as we want, at least part of the time. Uh, we can uh, cast off some of the preconceived notions that we have and go and make photographs that are interesting to us on the level that we want them to be interesting. So that's my suggestion is go go photograph like a child. Uh, go pretend that you're a kid and get down in the dirt and, and uh, go to the seashore and go to the lake and go to the swimming pool and uh, go into the mountains and, and uh, you know, look at the bugs and find out what it is that makes the world tick and find out what it is that makes uh, you uh, kind of sit up and take notice. So uh, there you go go and be a kid. Uh, somebody at least gave you permission to do that this week. So, so go to it. Um, a couple of other notes. One is, uh, I had put out a notice in the last podcast suggesting that I'm taking a look at the idea of, uh, doing a workshop in Italy in the late spring, early summer of, uh, 2008. And if anybody out there is l listening and is interested in doing that, and I have no details whatsoever, I'm just sort of uh, flying by the seat of my pants here. If anybody is interested in that, please send me a, an email at jeff at jeffcurto.com uh, and put the subject heading workshop in there so that I can filter it a little bit. And uh, uh, I may not get back to you right away. I'm just kind of gauging interest level. I've had a number of people contact me uh, for that. And uh, I'd just be interested in seeing what it is that you might be interested in, in doing and how many people I might be able to uh, to bring along on a workshop type experience uh, in Italy. Uh, also, I have had over the uh, year and a half or so that I have been doing a camera position, I've had a number of people ask me to produce a, uh, a file format that is not the M4A, that is not the sort of enhanced file uh, podcast. And my sense it has always been that 
because I'm able to embed the photographs right here in the podcast itself, that at least some of you are able to see the podcast uh, and see the images that I'm referencing as I talk about them. And that, I think, is worth uh, the price of admission right there, which, of course, is free. Um, but if I had an overwhelming number of people uh, who were interested in an audio-only format, of camera position, I would be uh, uh, more inclined to do the extra work to to produce uh, essentially two two versions of camera position, uh, the enhanced version, which I will continue to do, and an audio only version. Obviously, there are ways in which you guys could take the M4A file and convert it into an MP3 or whatever file format you choose. And, and in fact, that's probably what I would do as an MP3 file, but. If anybody is interested, please drop me a note and tell me why you're interested in having uh, a different file format than M4A, and I'd just be interested in knowing a little bit more about the, the listeners out there and what it is that uh, you're doing with camera position and and uh, uh, how, uh, how you're listening to it and, and whether the M4A file format is getting in your way. Um, I know that uh, probably 95% of you subscribe to the, the those of you who are subscribers subscribe through iTunes and so you can watch these things right there in iTunes and obviously also if you have a video iPod or one of the new fantabulous iPhones uh, you uh, you could watch the uh, podcast in that as well so uh, drop me a note if that file format choice might be uh, useful to you and then lastly uh, don't forget to visit the cameraposition.com blog uh, and uh, if you have comments about any of these podcasts, drop a comment in the comment uh, box for each episode or any one of the episodes that uh, uh, piques your curiosity. Uh, and or I really appreciate those of you who've been to the iTunes Music Store to uh, put a, uh, a, a note of uh, support in uh, the iTunes Music Store, both for camera position and for my History of Photography podcast, which I know a number of you also listen to. Uh, and any of those kinds of things are great because it really does help build listenership. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I am giving this away for free and, and I'm happy to do it and I'm going to con continue to do it for a long, long time. Uh, but having uh, uh, those kinds of comments that get, we, get me uh, a few more listeners to be in there as well is always great. So thanks for all of that and uh, some little business here at the end of the podcast. And uh, thanks for being here on Camera Position the podcast about the creative side of photography. Camera Position is a proud member of the Photocast Network, your photo resource in the potosphere. PhotocastNetwork.com